Hey guys, first off, I've completely scrapped the ground vehicle guide. There simply wasn't enough information to require making an entire video on it, and I'm not about to waste your time making things up. With that said, a commenter asked for my thoughts on the Platinum 5 roadmap, so here we are. I'm not here just to summarize the points, you can do that by reading the blog post. What I'm going to do is give my opinion on them, so let's start where we always do with a disclaimer. Firstly, everything in the dev blog is subject to change. All the input I'll be making is my opinion, my thoughts are based off of my experiences, and I don't claim to be the absolute authority on anything. Take my opinion with a grain of salt, and I encourage you all to discuss in the comments, as well as the Platinum 5 Discord server. So with all this in mind, let's begin. The roadmap is Platinum 5's way of communicating their development plans with the community. It gives a general idea of what is in the workings as well as who is working on them. There are indicators showing what is in progress and what is complete. A number of people voice concerns over developer transparency and this was a great way to address it. These features are covered in detail on the dev blog. I'm late to the party so we'll cover both entries today. Number 1 was posted in late May and it begins with an ETA of the operation as well as the roadmap. The first point covered is a revamp to the North Island, which is that region past Ronograd that is empty as of now. The enemy's fob will be located there, and it's even hinted that we'll see snow. That's nice. If you have observed the stages of a Ronograd city raid, you'll know that the enemy spawned from there anyways, and that's a bit of continuity which I appreciate. I'm quite curious to see how a raid there could affect enemy presence in other areas. For example, laying siege to the enemy fob could lead to fewer enemy reinforcements at the Department of Utilities. This only shows up on the dev blog, but next up is a revamp of the vehicle models. For context, some people complain about the realism and the quote-unquote uselessness of the A-10's cockpit. While I don't particularly care for aesthetics, I'm definitely excited about a change to the internal displays. Things like a more detailed artificial horizon, possibly FLIR displays for the mission enhanced Little Bird. If I'm reading this correctly, functional parts mean that things like pedals and collective will also react to player input. Feel free to correct me in the comments. Going back to the roadmap, we have improvements to the quarry, which include mines and visual polish. Players will be able to explore and maybe fight in them. In addition to packing white light, I'm interested as to whether the mines will be dark enough to warrant adding more IR equipment to use with Nod. Furthermore, we have improvements to the AI, things like better pathfinding and combat behavior, as well as the ability to throw flash grenades. The placement of enemies will be a lot more believable, and it's even mentioned that convoys and ambushes are on the table. Before I give my thoughts, I just want to say that AI is a tedious and oftentimes performance-intensive part of the game. There's so many variables that need to be accounted for just for realistic movement while balancing it with performance. Okay, with that out of the way, what I would suggest in addition to the placement of enemies is for their numbers to be scaled to what the enemy expects. Let me explain. For example, if a location was just raided by players, they should expect places in close proximity to be very rich in targets. Or if helicopters were used, there will be higher concentrations around open areas where players might insert. Maybe even encourage stealth and lower the number of enemies spawned if players enter the AO quietly, either by foot or flying NOE. Staying in the realm of ambiance, there are plans to add friendly NPCs and trading. This is probably the feature I'm the most excited for. It can significantly change how the player base approaches Civ Pops. I don't think there is necessarily a right way to do it, but I'm very sure there's a wrong way. Call it cheesy, but these NPCs shouldn't be dehumanized. Reputation is an interesting facet, and I think there should be more ways to raise it through things like quests that include, I don't know, fixing civilian property. This in turn can allow the addition of repair kits for use on friendly vehicles as well. On that note, I hope that reputation will also encourage players to respect civilians and even their property. Abusive A-10 pilots will find civilians to be very uncooperative or even hostile after leveling one of their cities. All I'll say about gestures is that I'm afraid of seeing the cancerous ways that people will use them. Just kidding, I can have a bit of fun. I think refined player interaction is something that the game really needs. On that note, I would like to see how emotes turn out. A few smooth animations would make for some lighthearted moments, especially in player versus player. I just did a move. Nice. I just did a move. Oh my god. Nice. Oh my god. I just did it. Ah. <laughs> he even threw the, he threw just... the fucking mint up on you guys. Holy Dang. shit. We're not done with PvP just yet, although this is a pretty brief section on the blog post. Basically, three new maps, ranked mode, and improvements to movement. I'm curious to see as to how the ranking system will work and whether or not PvP could actually become competitive in the sense that matchmaking rewards skill rather than internet speed. This is a very optimistic expectation, but I also expect good things from the devs. If the movements could become less sluggish, we might see some interesting gameplay where reflexes start to shine more. The radio menu is covered in the second blog entry. To cut things short, it will change the number of player interactions to something similar to the Ace 3 action menu for Armor 3. To my knowledge, however, actions like opening doors and aiding teammates will still use the traditional system. I'm definitely stoked to see how this will be used, especially with new features added down the line. Let's talk about raid mode. I'm looking forward to this, but I have my own expectations on what it's going to be like. Yours may vary. I'm not big on lore, but I enjoy knowing the premise of a game and what exactly my character is doing. In other words, my immersions. In its current state, the game can feel bland and oftentimes repetitive, so I'm eager to see how raid mode could bring some replayability to the scene. Longer co-op games would be a 
great way to expand PvE, and because kit and weapons will be mission specific, it might even encourage players to step out of their comfort zones and familiarize themselves with other weapons. The details on raid mode are rather vague, but I think that replayability could also be helped if specific pieces of kit had effects on gameplay. Stop! Before you get mad, this will only apply to raid mode where equipment selection is already restricted. I think that being able to choose between, for example, IR versus white light, or helmets versus hats, or chest rigs versus plate carriers could not only help to mix things up, but allow players to develop their own philosophies on how to create mission-specific loadouts. Better yet, for those who like the idea of speedrunning, it would create an interesting challenge to see which playstyle fits each mission best. These are just my thoughts, feel free to discuss. To conclude, as stated, if you have further ideas, please submit them to the Platinum 5 Discord server, I'll throw a link down to it in the description. It's also a great place to find people to play with, and I sometimes hop in there from time to time. So that's that. However, until next time, stay safe. Thank you.